All right, so today let us talk a little bit about how do we use Ray as a platform and scale out existing machine learning pipelines, specifically on scikit-learn and Spark pipelines. And we also look at these combination because it's a very well uh, adapted data science community you know, things out there. My name is Raghu Ganti. I'm a principal research staff member at IBM's TJ Watson Research Center. And the work that we are doing today is uh, still in its initial stages, and uh, it is being done as a collaboration joint effort between IBM and Red Hat. And the team, of course, that is working primarily is listed below there. So why pipelines? I mean, there are just so many pipelines out there, right? If you think about uh, Airflow as one of the pioneers in the whole pipelines, there is SKLearn, of course, which every data scientist is, is aware of. Uh, there are other pipelines like Kubeflow, which is quite popular. Uh, Luigi, you know, Spark has its own pipelines, which borrows concepts from scikit-learn. But why do we want to think about pipelines in this context? And what is it that you know, attracts us uh, in terms of thinking about it? And there are so many other pipelines that we are not talking about right now. And uh, you know, I'm only showing a few of them here. But uh, you know, name it, there are just so many different variations of these pipelines, whether it is for ML or more general purpose things. And speaking of that, in fact, two days ago, you know, I did come across a blog on any scale, which talks about uh, airflow integration with Ray as a backend, which is kind of a really cool thing to see there. So what we wanted to do, what we set out to do was to ask the question, can we take Ray as a platform, which is a fantastic distributed platform and then build these ML pipelines and workflows on top of Ray in a native manner. So the question is not around, hey, can I take an existing you know, uh, pipeline mechanism and then try to use Ray as a backend, but literally use Ray as the basic you know, native platform and then use Ray primitives to be able to build pipelines. And the other question is, can I take an popular pipeline out there, like a SKLearn pipeline, just import it into Ray and achieve data parallelism and compute parallelism? So these are sort of the questions that we started you know, setting out to do there. So in order to do that, sort of examine this, take a step back and look at what is the focus of SKLearn pipelines. If you look at SKLearn, it typically has this transform and fit where a transform is you take an array, an array like pattern like an X and then you know give out X prime, right? And a fit is more about taking the X and the labels, the features and the labels and create a fitted model. Of course, Spark took the same idea and then said like X can be very large, it's a distributed data set, and then I will use Spark's data parallel scaling and be able to do these pipelines using Spark's data parallelism. What is really missing and what we felt was key is to sort of combine some of these learnings and then use Ray as the native platform for scaling these pipelines. So how do we do that, right? I think the core idea lies in this fact that Ray provides not just a computational scale out, but also a distributed object store. So think about those two primitives, and then we start mapping into how do we take these pipelines and then really scale them out. So if you think about those primitives, the key component is how do I scale at a data parallel level? How do I take a single data item and then break it up into say maybe multiple data items? In this case, I'm talking about providing a list of objects and to, to a transform and each object you're applying the same transform. So you literally can scale out at each object level, applying the same transform at mul for multiple objects. And the key here is not a list of objects, but a list of object references, because each object can potentially take its own time for transformation, its own task that is happening, or its own actor parallelism that is happening. And the same thing goes with fit as well, especially when you start thinking about you know, the, the pipelines that are exploring in an automated fashion, what is the right model to fit, or it's not just you know, trying to do hyperparameter tuning, but I'm picking 10 different models, 10 different you know, types of trees, which is the best tree that would fit in. Or I want to explore 
a million combinations of different kinds of functions that apply on the data as it is flowing and find the right pipeline that would fit for my specific model. So that's where thinking about a list of object references starts becoming the key. And that's when we can start thinking about, hey, how do I scale it out? This is one of the key additions that we do in terms of pipelines that would enable Ray to scale out at the level in a native manner, you know, use uh, all of these list of objects and object references, in fact, to be able to do the computation. In addition to that, we also introduced this concept of an and-or graph. I mean, and-or graphs have been there in, uh, you know, in the literature for a very long time. I'm sure there are several pipeline constructs which implicitly use this notion. But specifically, if I look at sklearn, you can think of an AND node like a feature union, but it is a lot more than feature union that can do not just uh, you know simple combination of features, but be able to do implement your own concept of a feature union. The whole concept of an AND node is it's taking input from various nodes and then trying to do a combination of that and then outputting to multiple nodes. So you can think of it somewhat like a, a barrier primitive where data is coming in, you wait for some of the data items to be ready, and then you're trying to you know, combine those data items to create your new in, uh, output. Whereas the OR node is, think of it like a for loop, I'm exploring multiple models, but the input to each of this model is exactly the same. So I take X that comes in, and the OR node is trying to fan it out into multiple different steps. So I can say, hey, I want to explore an XGBoost classifier. I want to explore a random forest classifier, and I want to explore you know, some other classifier. Now, the input to each of these classifiers might be exactly the same. So how do we reuse that same input? Again, goes back to, I think, the race uh, primitives of having a single object reference, and that gets reused across all of them. And that's the key for an OR node. Now we start getting into a lot of more details, you know, since the uh, inception of this project and some of it has been, uh, we have, we already have initial implementations and trials and so on. Uh, what we started realizing is it starts getting very interesting when we think about when do these OR nodes and AND nodes start firing? You know, how can you combine these inputs from various different nodes and how do you start thinking about, uh, uh, you know, how do I come, what, what kind of barrier primitives that you start thinking about and so on. So if I want to sort of take a step back and say, what are the key things that we, we think from an idea perspective and from what we want from this particular pipelines is uh, the function is a unit of compute. So unlike uh, if you think about Kubeflow, where uh, functions are, are at the level of containers, we are taking the approach that Python functions unit of compute here, which makes it very intuitive for the data scientist. I mean, and especially when you start thinking about the transformer APIs, right? Not the deep learning transformer, but the transform and the fit APIs. So they are fairly intuitive, fairly well adopted. So we want to use that as our basis and make Python functions a unit of compute, and that Python function gets scaled out using it. Then, of course, the key is this list of objects or object references to be more precise as an IO. So we are referring to each object in the, the computation a output of a task is a reference or is a pointer that this computation will be, you know, output will be available sometime in the future. So that's the IO that is happening between the pipeline stages, which enables us to, you know, scale it out and make multiple copies and, and process the whole thing. And of course, the sharing of objects is using the plasma store. And uh, uh, of course, you do have your, you know, zero copy object sharing as well. Now, given that Ray is allowing you to do both Python and Java uh, computations, we do uh, you know, plan on leveraging the ecosystem like RayDB, for example, and to enable data, efficient data exchange in a cross environment. So when I'm using Spark, which is a JVM-based backend primarily, even though you might be able to write things in Python and use Python heavily there, but it's a JVM-based backend. So how can I exchange data efficiently with something like RayDB in the in, in the mix and then get Ray to form a unifying platform in a cross environment manner. Then finally, of course, enrich DAGs, which add on top of what scikit-learn already provides using the OR nodes and AND nodes, which where AND nodes can provide you know, arbitrary lambdas 
and or nodes are providing your fan out expressions. So we started thinking about this whole thing as a way to bring in some of the richness that say Spark has in terms of its you know, map, flat map and distributed data sets, which is a far richer data primitives that Spark is providing. Whereas there is a lot of object level primitives and sharing of objects that is being provided by me. So how do we sort of combine these two primitives and enable the scaling of these data processing workflows or these pipelines for ML tasks. So just to give a teaser, when we implemented a, a very simple pipeline, in this case, we took a you know simple pre-processing step. It was in fact a Kaggle competition that we you know uh, uh, took this particular implementation that won this Kaggle competition. Uh, it was an exploration that was being done across multiple different models. And uh, in this case, it was between random forest, gradient boost, and decision tree. We took that pipeline, an sklearn pipeline, and we basically implemented the same sklearn pipeline using our primitives. And, and that's what you see below here. So the top is your sklearn pipeline, and the bottom is using the, our pipeline approach with the ray as a backend. Uh, what we observed was uh, a simple preliminary analysis showed us 2x speed up. And that's right out of the box. And we've tried it out in multiple different data sets. And of course, the larger the amount of fan out, the more scaling that we do get. But the point here is 2x is a significant speed up. It ideally, you would like to expect a 3x speed up. But I think given the data set size and amortization and sharing, it does reduce the amount of speed up. So we have sort of looking at, you know, looking at other kinds of pipelines as well, we have seen speed ups of as much as 8x in certain, you know, cross validation tasks, which uh, uh, I don't have an example right now, but those are some things that we have been looking at further. So what, where are we right now? I mean, if you look at, think about it, if I want to take, you know, our pipeline implementation that we have currently sitting on top of native Spark and look at the comparison with some of the key pipelines out there. So if you look at something like Airflow and, you know, and Kubeflow and Apache Spark, they do provide, of course, task level parallelism, uh, which sklearn is uh, missing. I say sklearn is missing, even though, you know, there is some, some components of sklearn, which does provide a parallel backend where you can provide it using job lib, but it still does take a lot of effort for somebody to use it. So here we're talking about, you know, hey, how can I do parallelism in a very simple fashion, leveraging the task and actor, uh, uh, you know, components that Ray provides. Then there's a whole data parallelism, which is very similar to what Spark does. So because we are using this whole notion of this list of objects and object references, we are able to provide a certain amount of data parallelism which is uh, not as rich as what Spark is providing, but still allows us to do a lot of the ML tasks in a very clean manner. And then the other interesting aspect is, of course, the and or graphs, which enable you to introduce some of these nodes in between, where I can say, hey, you know what? I want to take inputs from these three, four different nodes, combine them up, match them up using something like a feature union, and then send it away down. And all of these feature unions can be scaled because ultimately the invariant that we keep is these list of object references as input output. Then of course, the computational unit is very critical. If you start thinking about, you know, where are we operating? And this is why I go back to the original point of saying that we need to think about pipelines from being natively on top of Ray. So how can I take Ray as a platform, use the very native primitives, which is your you know, actors, tasks, and then also the distributed object storage, and then be able to use that platform for scaling that. So the computational unit becomes a Python or a Java function. And unlike, say, things like Kubeflow, where container is a computational unit. Then the other aspect that we have been sort of thinking about, and which is realizable again in, in, the, in a Ray-like platform, is the mutability of the DAG. So you could potentially you know, think about um, uh, uh, an auto ML kind of a scenario where you have explored a bunch of pipelines to a certain stage and then suddenly the data scientist realizes that, aha, you know what, I need to add a new you know, classifier or a new node in there so that it can be explored further. We would, by design, enable the addition of new nodes to the unexecuted portions of the pipelines. That makes mutability of the DAG possible. 
So with that sort of, you know, where are we today? We are at a place where, you know, we are uh, basically have an initial implementation that we are working on. Uh, we do have a proposal that is out there with uh, the Ray and the OSS community uh, that we are discussing on how we can contribute some of this code into the open source. Uh, we're also thinking about other kinds of strategies, things like, you know, different kinds of graph traversals and pipeline traversals so that you can explore pipelines in different ways. Uh, we're looking at early stopping criteria. Maybe you want to say that this pipeline has you know, executed for a certain amount of time or other criteria that you might say, hey, you know what? I got 90% accuracy. I don't need to go any further than that because that's all I need for my business problem. And of course, as I talked about mutability of uh, execution pipelines. And with that, I'll just end with a short uh, uh, blurb on saying that there are two other talks which are very much related to the pipelines concept. Uh, one is, of course, taking these pipelines, being able to run on top of Ray in Open Data Hub, which is basically Red Hat's OpenShift-based platform for AI. And the other is an application level, which is um, uh, coming from, again, another team member. Uh, the first one is coming from Eric Erlanson in Red Hat, and the second one is coming from Lin Song Chu. Looking at um, processing very large volumes of data, in this context, we are looking at earth science data, uh, specifically satellite imagery. How do we leverage unsupervised deep learning and combined with, of course, Ray and Horobot and use the pipeline concept to be able to uh, clean up the data, to be able to create feature vectors and then go down the pipeline in understanding, you know, what is, uh, what can we identify? What was interesting about, um, uh, about these different kinds of images? And of course, I'll, you know, leave it here because there is a lot more depth that the, the people, the team will go into more detail in other talks. And with that, I think I'm open for Q&A at this point.